I don't know how would how would you describe that, Todd? At at that point, like we weren't Initially, like in the, in the gritty of it. Initially, we're kind of we were we we were kind of working with our third partner, and he was doing a lot of this, and he was cranking it out. And okay. so it was kind of a learning experience, like, hey, what's going on? And, and <clears throat> he wanted to take it to another level, and uh, he didn't have any processes in place. So it was just okay. every day was total chaos. And and frankly, he worked pretty well. Frankly, huh? he worked pretty well uh, in 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 the chaotic mode. Like he would just he was just getting things done, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but he was looking for more efficiency and how do we grow this? How do we scale it? How do we have more crews, you know, more trusted crews? You know, do we need handymen? You know, what does this business really look like at at a higher volume? And we pretty quickly did like 33 houses together. Uh, so we, we, you know, we put some real scaling techniques in place and we probably in hindsight moved too fast, you know, on that, but you, you get a heck of an education. It's baptism by fire and <clears throat> no one house is gonna kill you you know, if you're doing a bunch and, and, and you're getting a lot, we're kind of data guys, Brian and I, so we like to, you know, if you do want, not, not saying it's not the right thing to do. And for some people it certainly is, but <clears throat> if you do one or two houses only a year, <clears throat> you better hope that those are good houses and they hit. Um, yeah. You know, if you're doing 20, 22 houses a year, <clears throat> you've got some leeway there. Hopefully a few of them are decent mm -hmm. and you can try some things, you know? We've so, been able to do all kinds of different things and try some different things and go outside of where a realtor might say, hey, everything white and beige and let's yeah. just be careful on that, you know, and we happen to have, we've gotten to a place with our team now where we've got designers who just do some absolutely incredible things who would probably have been long gone like two or three years ago <laughs> if we were <laughs> saying everything's white and beige, you know, they're doing feature walls yep. and black doors and all kinds of different bronze stuff. It, it, it's, it's really cool. And we've benefited from it too. So if that was yep. if we had one or two houses, we probably would have never tried that stuff. Um, and in hindsight, it helps when you have a, a an unbelievably talented construction leader, which, you know, Nicole is and designer. Mm -hmm. um, so that part helps immeasurably, but, but still, you know, she was able to try new things and get some things right and get some things wrong. She, she actually got more things, way more things right than wrong to the point where we were like hey feel free feel free to get some things wrong sometimes you know let's, let's push envelopes which which she did she really kind of pulled brian and i out of our comfort zone uh but that's the benefit you get of going kind of big and getting to try different things for sure so that that first it was i'm assuming it was a fix and flip your first deal that you guys did and was there did you i mean i'm assuming you guys made money on it and, and learned a lot of lessons from that um now did, was it a lot less did you i mean how many lessons did you learn on that on that first deal i think we made money on our third deal but the, okay. but the third deal finished before the first deal i and i and i might oh. have a little bit sideways but like the third deal was amazing the third okay. house we bought but the first house was first house uh, south of, you're talking Melrose, right, bro? Yep. Yeah, so that, I would say that was not a good house. If we had just bought that house, done that house, we'd have been probably folding up the business, you know, about six months okay. later. So. so so did you lose money on it or did you just straight buy, yeah. break even? Yeah. What was it? <sighs> It's, it's kind of crazy. It's almost embarrassing to say we don't totally know. I think that was a pretty darn close to break even, wasn't it, bro? Okay. Yeah, so, it was like a couple thousand dollars. The other day. Yeah, so so the way I see it is, is, and this is what I'm trying to tell new people coming in as well, is is you said you, you made a tremendous deal on your third deal, okay? Your first deal, you basically, I, I'll call it break even, okay? Yep. Um, making a thousand dollars as a fix and flipper is not that <laughs> not too good you know we, we definitely lost money on our first deal like we, do, yeah. we don't have to we don't we don't have to sugarcoat it. i think a lot of people sugarcoat this business yeah uh, and say like yeah you know we, we probably broke even i mean we've we've lost a bunch of money on a bunch of houses and part of yeah. the reason why we've we've done that we've done that very specifically yeah and i mean we don't want to lose money don't don't get yeah. wrong but but what happens is 
you know, we're trying a bunch of things and we're gathering data. Like one of the, one of the reasons why we did 42 houses the very first year that we got into this business mm -hmm. is we knew that we needed data. And if you don't have data, like Todd said, you do one house, you just, you don't know if you were good, were you lucky, were you unlucky? Um, so we're like, okay, kind of the big thinker side of, us yep. is, okay, we, we really need to understand this business and coming from Quizzle where we had millions of people, uh, inside of the software, you get a lot of data and just like really understand. So we said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna attempt to tackle this with a lot of data. And the only way you can do that is buy a lot of houses. The only way you can do that is take a lot of chances. So you okay. take chances and they don't always work out. And that's perfectly fine. That's a thousand percent a philosophy of ours is that, hey, you know what? We are going to, we're going to keep trying. Uh, you're going to fail forward. Like if you yep. take on a project and you lose money, like you better, you better win from like learning why did that one not work? You know, so you do your postmortem, understand why didn't that project work? Did I buy it too high? Did our cost mm. overruns go too high? Like what was the, what was the scenario there for that to, you know, kind of, go the direction that it did. Uh, but I think what you'll find in this business is there's just a lot of people that have a lot of like bravado, like, oh, I've never lost any money. Uh, and the reality is if you haven't lost, like if you're doing, you know, a couple of houses a year, that that's perfectly fine. But if you're yeah. doing it at scale, every like flipper that I know that's doing flipping at scale, you're going to lose money. You're going to come across a buzzsaw. You're going to come across a problem house. Uh, yes. And realistically, if you're not trying you're leaving a lot of money on the table by not losing money which sounds crazy but there's so many houses that we buy that you would otherwise be like you know what you're not gonna you know it might be a little too tight um mm -hmm. but over these last four or five years we've been able to buy a lot of houses that were tighter uh and you lose money on maybe one or two of the tight houses mm -hmm. uh and you figure out how to how to eke out more money than you were anticipating so so and, anyhow, sorry to sorry to jump on top of it like that. <laughs> that's all right. There's just so many people. Like, there's nobody in this space that's just like, hey, like, let me tell you about all the problems. Let me tell you, like, yes. we're perfect every day. Like, we've never had one thing go wrong. Yeah. And you know what, what's today? Today's Monday. I've had 15 yeah. things go wrong today. <laughs> and, and that's the key that I'm trying to bring to everybody is that you know what you need to take action, and you learn from action. Okay. So you learn from your mistakes. If you haven't made mistakes, you haven't learned anything. And this is what I tell people all the time. I not only learn from my own, my own mistakes, but by talking to you guys, I'll learn from your mistakes too. <laughs> so by, by bringing in, asking you guys questions, Hey, and, it, and if you're not that type of person to go out there and put your, put your business out there, I, uh, you know, you're going to make more mistakes because <clears throat> You have to be out there to, you have to learn from other people's like, Hey, I, I got in this situation and, and then you got to be able to take risk. You, you, you know, you're not a flipper if you're not going to take any risk, you know, there's always risk in, in this business, no matter what. So hey, I, hey, Randy, I that, that, that's a great point. And Brian is a master. Um, every, every once in a while, my wife will joke when she's seeing one of his Facebook lives or something be like, <laughs> Oh my gosh, did you? Are you okay with him saying that? You, 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 what if your investors hear that? Uh, and I'm like, totally. Like, it, it's more than okay. It's the reality of the situation. Yes. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it's not perfect. But um, you know what I think? And you just you just kind of mentioned it, but I think you do yourself a disservice when you're not honest at all. Because then nobody, you know, if you're kind of like, hey, everything's great with me. You know, we're doing, we're killing it. How are you doing? Like the other person would be like, oh yeah, I'm I'm killing it too. Instead, you know, Brian's really good at sharing some of the, 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 the tougher stories or the things that are going mm -hmm. wrong. And next thing you know, that person's opening up. They're going, oh, yeah, I had this happen. And pretty yep. soon you're talking about how to fix that stuff. You're talking about real issues, not like the Facebook. Yeah, everything's perfect. And here's my beautiful family picture, you know, all the time. Oh, it's yeah. kind of like, you know, it's just kind of a moment of honesty when you when you open up. Other people tend to open up, too, kind of like you're saying so. Yeah, most definitely. And when, when you put yourself out there to people, there's only a handful of people out there that will try to bring you down. And the only reason they're trying to bring you down is because they're down. So, uh, you want to ignore those people and just stick with the people who wants to help you. 
and who, or just share their story with you. And now you can learn from their story. So, and that's another reason why I wanted to do this podcast out and put every, put all this out there so people can learn. I don't pretend to be a guru. I'm in wholesaling. That's what I know. I'm not a flipper. I've never done a flip out. I've never flipped a house myself. I will one day, <laughs> um, but I, I don't pretend to know that. So that's why I bring people like you guys on um, or lenders or anything like that and ask you the questions and selfishly, I'll use you guys in the future. So, <laughs> you know, um, now I do have a couple questions here from the audience. And so we'll go from this. The Facebook one is from uh, David Call Jr. Um, it's from the Facebook group, so that's why you don't see the name on here, but I have it pulled up on the side. So uh, he said, uh, hi, Todd and Brian. Um, it can't always work out. Uh, have you ever uh, had to let anyone, uh, and basically let anyone go, um, you know, have it work out for both parties? Um, and have you, uh, happy to have you shift get, I, you guys I, shifting me, on the fly. So let yeah. me let me jump on it. So we we know Dave really well. And so, oh, I, I, wait, wait, wait! I was gonna jump. I was gonna say, oh no, never, Dave. Thanks. thanks for the <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Brian. We know we know Dave. We know Dave super well. He's awesome. Yeah. So 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 we we were working we were working with Dave uh, probably last year, and he he's just kind of. Kind of joking around saying hey did it ever not work out for both parties uh we we were working with him and and uh you know at, at the end of the day like we did go our separate ways uh but we love dave. dave dave's awesome he's got a beautiful daughter he's a good dude he's learning learning this wholesale business he's working with uh todd chun uh right now helping him out yep. uh i don't know to to what extent he's he's working with him but dave is one of these guys um let me let me tell you a little story about him. Um, so, Dave is one of these guys that uh, he was a wholesaler threw out a, an opportunity um, mm -hmm. for a house in Harper Woods. I met him out there. He had a partner at the time uh, and went out there, talked with him, and man, Dave and I had a great conversation. We we were only at the house for I don't know maybe thirty minutes or so, uh, and then afterwards. Um, you know, I was talking with him. We had told him what our price would be, which was less than what he had in our contract for. He renegotiated it. Uh, mm -hmm. And then he and I had a fantastic conversation, talked with him probably for an hour, uh, you know, about life's challenges and ups and downs. And and uh, he's been through some adversity. And, and man, he is one of these guys that was just so inspiring to be able to like fight through and battle through the adversity that he's kind of faced in, in, uh, in his life. And uh, it was like, hey, you know what? Like, I want to be around good people. And at the end of the day, like, you know, he, he's doing his thing. He's learning. Uh, I mm -hmm. feel like we go down parallel paths in this business. Like sometimes we work together and we're together. Uh, and yeah. other times we're, you know, we, we work near each other. So Dave and I, like, you know, we, like, he'll still send me uh, opportunities. And and uh, from that, we, we had a house in Harper Woods that, that Dave brought to us. And from that meeting, we, we, uh, he introduced us to one of our main crews, uh, mm -hmm. that has been fantastic, you know? So we, we've, we, we've worked with John and Tony for the last couple of years now, uh, just from, you know, going to look at wholesale houses and having conversations, like we we're able to work with him for a while. We were able to, you know, buy a house, we we're able to find a new crew. So mm -hmm. this conversation, so he's, he's over here joking around on, on the side here, but just, just, <laughs> yeah, <around. clears throat> most definitely like Dave's a and, really, really good guy. Like before. And, and, and real quick on that. I mean, yeah. we, we talked about the fact that we try things, right? We try a lot of different things. Yeah. So we, we were, you know, we were trying to do some outbound and some yeah. outbound stuff, which is really hard. Dave did a phenomenal oh, yeah. job with it. He's incredible at talking to people. It, we were we just weren't ready for it as a business. We were, mm. we weren't we just kind of realized we weren't ready. We didn't have we didn't really even have the resources and people around Dave to make it work to to do outbound. You know, we yep. thought, hey, this is this is an opportunity. We're going to give it a try, and uh, and we did. And Dave, Dave was great, and our company just kind of wasn't ready for it. But that's you know those are things we do. We try things, yeah, and we bring on great people. So most definitely, 
and you know that that's the good thing like i I'm, like i said i met dave a couple times you know and uh he is working with todd um on that and but yeah he's a great guy um awesome person to be around so if you ever get a chance to to meet him in person at the meetups by all means have a good conversation with them uh learn from them so Thank you.